Hello, good afternoon. Uh, today we'll be looking at making a boot cut trouser or a white bottom pants or trouser, whichever you want to call it. Uh, it's basically a trouser that is fitted at the knees and spread out at the lower part. So, uh, like we did the former trial from our previous video, remember this is the waist, this is the hip line, this is the tie line. This is the knee and this is the bottom. I, I, I know you still remember how we got the measurement up. And I measured the tie for the front is from this side to this side here. Yeah? This way I measured the tie here. Yeah? And this is the tie for the back. Remember I said we want to measure the tie. We don't measure exactly at the tie line. We bring our hand a little like one inch or one and a half inches down before we measure the tie same for the back also uh, one thing i forgot to add to the last the last video was when we want to measure the length uh, you know in the length section we have the waist to hip we have the waist to tie and we have the full length so before we start taking all these measurements i have to you have to remove the band length if you're using a one inch band that means before you start measuring the waist to hip if the waist to hip was seven you have to remove one inch from it that would be six and if you want to measure the waist to tie if the waist to tie was let's say ten or nine you have to move one inch from it that will give us nine and if you want to measure the full length if it was 37 you have to move one inch for the band that will be 36 then you now measure 36 so whatever you measure on the horizontal line you have to move the band length you can use one inches you can use two inches now i remember before before I want, we have measured the tie here. Eh? Now, if I want to measure the knee and the bottom, I have to look for the center line of this trouser for the front and for the back. Now, if I want to get the center line from the last video I did, I'll measure from this hip point here to the tie I measured there. Whatever answer I get, I divide into two. So, from measuring from here to I have eight, so I divide to two dice. For our market here at the hip line, and I'll measure at the bottom also. I'll measure the same four inches, then I'll join it to a straight line like this. I'll join it like this. So now the same thing for the back also. I'll measure the tie I have from here to this side. This is eight three quarter. So I'll divide that eight three quarter by two. I'll make sure it from this side inside. So each quarter by that should be four one quarter. So I make sure it's here. And then the bottom also. And don't forget, I always say the back is bigger than the front in a trouser. The back is bigger than the front. So I want to measure the knee now. Now for the knee of this person, her knee was let me use let me use 16 because I'm just assuming measurement now, but the paper is not big. So let's assume I'm using 16. So I had to divide it. No, I, I was using 15, sorry. 15. I had to divide it into two. That would be seven and a half and seven and a half. Seven, that is seven and a half for the front and seven and a half for the back. And like I said, in both measurements, the difference should be one inch. So if the front, no, so if I'm going to make the difference between seven and a half and seven and a half, the front is going to be seven and the back is going to be eight. And if I add the two of them, I'm still going to get. 18. So I'm going to measure 7 for the front. For the knee, I'm going to measure 8 for the back, for the knee. Now for the bottom also, the bottom, since we are doing a wider bottom for this one, the bottom part, I'm using 20. So if I divide that 20 by 2, I'm going to have 10 and 10. And like I said, the front is always smaller than the back. So I'm going to measure the difference between front and back is 1 inch, at least 1 inch. So we have 10 and 10 before it supposed to give us 20 so the front is going to be 9 and the back is going to be 11 and 9 plus 11 is still going to give us 20 so for the bottom for the front i'm going to measure 9 and for the knee for the front i'm going to measure 7 so that 7 i'm going to measure at the knee i will divide that 7 into 2 that will be 3 and a half and 3 and a half so i'll join it like this something like this and for the bottom i'm supposed to measure 9 so I'm going to divide that 9 to 2, which will be 4, uh, four and a half and 4 and a half. So I'm going to measure 4 and a half to this side. 
and I'll measure four and four and a half to this side. So I'll join both lines together like this. For the front also, I join it together like this. You can see the very what I'm doing. So since I've joined, this is the bottom part of the trouser. So I'm going to erase this side also won't be confused. So this is the flare at the bottom. And I have to join from the knee now to the tie. So what I do for the tie is I'll take it one inch up. I won't join it to the tie line here. I'll take it one inch up. So it will be somewhere here like this. Then I'll join it to the tie like this. One inch above the tie, and I'll join this to the front tie also, like this. So I have a shaping like this. So this is the front of the trouser now. So I raise this line like this now. You see, and for the hip also, I have to measure one inch down inside to reshaping the hip so i'll bring it down like this and reshaping the hip again so that these parts of this hip here will form a a a a, a perfect curve like this to form a perfect curve like this now we'll go to the back now now for the knee we have to do the knee first remember i use seven inches for the knee so for the back i'm using eight so I'm going to measure for the knee here. Yeah? That's eight. I'm going to divide into two, four and four. I measure four here. Yeah? I measure four here. Yeah? So this is my four here. Yeah? And this is my four here. Yeah? And for the lower part, and for the lower part, remember the back is 11. So I divide it into five and a half and five. So I'm going to measure five and a half here. Yeah? And five and a half here like this. Join it together like this. This is the knee here. Join it together like this. So I'll clean this off like this. Now I'll join it to the tie here. Like I said, I'll measure one inch up here like this. I'll measure one inch up. Take it one inch up a little like this. Then I'll join it to the knee. Now bring for the hip here. I'll bring one inch down so I can shape it in the hip to get a perfect curve. So I'm shaping it like this, like that. You have a perfect curve like this. And so you don't forget. I said the front is smaller than the back. So for me to get the 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 tie correctly, see, I've only done this side. I've not done, I've not joined this side to the knee. I'm not going to join it yet. I have to measure both of them to make sure they are equal. So the tie we're using was, let me say the tie I'm using is 20. And like, I, if you remember the division of tie, you divide the tie into two. Let me say I'm using a tie of 20. If you divide the tie into two, that should be 10 and 10. And make sure both the difference between the front and back is at least one inch. So that means you should be having nine, and the level for the tie so that means the combination of the front and the back should give me 20 which is the original tie because we are working on one leg so now now we have the tie shape for the front i'm going to measure whatever i have here so because this is just a sample paper if i'm if i was making a a, a reef fabric or a reef paper if i measure from here to here I'm going to have something like maybe eight and a half. Let's say eight and a half. So now that eight and a half, if from here to here is eight and a half, I'm going to take the measurement I have eight and a half and continue at this back here. And continue at the back here to make sure it give me 20 here. So then I'm going to shape it. Let's assume this is our 20 here. Let me come again. I'll measure from here. So here like this, it will give me eight and a half. 
Then I'll now take the half, eight and a half, and continue at the back here to this side to make sure it gives me 20. So it's going to stop me. So then and I'll join it to the knee like this. You see, that will not give me this shape here like this. So here and here has given me the complete measurement for the tie, which is 20. Now the hip. Now the hip, I said the hip is 36. 36. Remember for us to get the hip, we divide it by 4, which is supposed to give us 9. Now, this is what is happening here now. We are working on one leg. On one leg. If we are working on both legs now, the combination of both legs will give me 36. That means one leg is supposed to give me 18. Let me come again. Combination of both legs, the front, the left leg and the right leg is supposed to give me 36. That means for one leg, which might be left or right, it should give you, it should be giving me 18. Now, the measurement of this front hip and this back hip is supposed to give me 18. So that means I have to measure both of them to give me 18. Now remember, we have done the shaping for the front. So I'm just gonna measure from here on the hip line. Whatever answer I have here, whatever answer I have here, let me say I'm going to have eight here now. If I measure from here to here eight, I'll take that eight measurement and continue from the hip at the back on the hip line and make sure that whatever I measure here is going to give me 18. Now, if I do this measurement now, there's every likelihood is going to come outside more than this line. So it's going to be somewhere here like this. So I'm going to join it together like this. Then I'll join it to the waist measurement here. Join to the waist measurement here like this. So if you look at this, I can see that the the back the back is bigger than the front. So this is size is going to come out like. So I will raise this up. And this is the flap in front. You can either attach the flap to the fabric, or cut it separately. That is for the flap. And for the back waist, like I said, because of the buttocks at the back of a woman, I have to lift it up by one and a half here. So I just lift it up. Make sure from the waist at the back, I lift it up one and a half and join it like this. You can see the line is no longer straight, it is slant. So I'll clean it off. And I add some allowance to it. You want to use one inch and one and a half. Clean allowance to it. I'm using one inch, I use one and a half if you like. Yeah. And the back also, I'm adding my swing allowance. Now, at the top area here, this side, I add half inch, not one inch, half inch. If you like, you can add one inch, I don't know. But for me, for the top area, I normally add half inch here. Then I cut it out.
Thank you. 